Hello, on this video I want to talk about levels. So there are two ways in which the transporter can move from one level to the next. These are the lift and the level gate. But let's remember a little bit how it used to be to move from one level to the other when levels didn't exist. To do that I built this model with the previous way and the transporter way. And for that I have this simple network. So these are the lifts in a way where you have just a path that goes from Z0 to Z30. So 30 pixels up. So that means, according to the scale, uh, 3 meters. Also, there are two agent types, the forklift. And I changed this in order for them not to rotate vertically as well, because since this is a lift, I want them to go up without rotating in the Z direction, and the same with the pallet, no rotation vertically. But let's see how this works. Both models are using the exact same agents. So four lifts as resources and pallets as agents. So let's see the differences. These guys move normally. And we see the first difference here that the agent, this is the transporter who takes the pallet here. And this is the normal resource which takes the pallet here. Normally you have to move a little bit the forklift in order to reach the pallet properly, but this transporter makes it much nicer already. So let's continue. You will see that the transporter moves towards the direction and the other one doesn't. And it's the same thing when they go down. This one moves towards the direction and this one doesn't. The thing is that these are two differences, and there are probably many more, that differentiate the transporters with normal resources and the transporters actually completely ignore these two options. They don't care about it. So don't try to use them ever because they just won't work with the transporters. So in a way, if you don't use levels, the transporter can go up the stairs or up a ramp, but cannot go up a lift because it will always maintain the direction of the Z movement. So let's use levels instead. So for now, we just have the normal level, the default one. Let's call it level zero. And let's add a new level. And let's call it level one. So right now, everything is in level zero, but we will need to change some of this stuff to level one. And this will be a different network, right? Because it's up. So we can just click here in the network and define this in level one. Of course, we will also need to remove these paths that we're not going to use anymore. And there's one more thing that we need to put into level one, this one. So this is level zero and this is level one. So let's add the lifts. In level one, the lift will be here. So the lift can be found here in the material handling library and we can increase the size and you will see that it has four nodes in which you can connect paths. So I just connected here and I will add a new lift and connect it here. So you can define the agent, but it doesn't really matter. You can define the floor elevation in meters. We said that it's three meters and you have to do the same in the other one. So on level zero, we need to create the same lift. So let's copy this one and paste it here. And we already have the points in which this lift can work. So this point refers to the output of the lift that is on level one. So now we can connect this here and this here. And you need to define the main landing. So let's make the lifts on level zero to be the main ones. And the main ones will define the lifting speed, the picking up time and the dropping time and also the agent selection pattern. So let's hit uh, first in, first out, but you can always use the same options you have in other blocks, priority based or agent comparison. Let's keep FIFO for now for simplicity. The same we'll do here. We'll define this as main landing and we'll keep the default. Now on level one, you need to define what is the main landing here. So it refers to the main landing lift two or lift three. So which one is this? It is lift two. 
and this one is leaf 3. So that means that this one will refer to main to leaf 2 and this one will refer to leaf 3. The leaf properties should be defined only in one floor and not in all the floors. So that is why if you have many more floors you can define all the properties of the leaf in only one floor and refer the leaf in other floors to that leaf. But do you think the second palette will be able to use the lift? And the answer is actually no. So when you run this, you have an error and you need the agent to be located in the same network as the destination node. And this doesn't happen because in the normal network, the lift is not considered part of it. And you can see here in the presentation that you have two networks, this one and this one. So we will have to remove this. If you want to use lifts, you can only use transporters. Now, I made a mistake here. Um, the floor elevation for this lift is actually zero. And for this one, it's also zero meters. Now you see that there is an elevation here. And this guy goes to the destination without problems. Now, the, the forklift can enter the lift through any direction. And if you want to limit that, you need to put walls around the, the lift. And of course, the transporters also take into consideration walls, rectangular walls and circle walls as obstacles. We're not going to do that in this model, but you can check the help documentation where it is explained in detail. Now, path guided transporters, forgive my mistakes, but free space transporters do not. So we need to be very careful on how we define levels on a model. So let's make some changes in order to see what errors we made. Because when you run the model on free space, you may encounter very annoying errors. And here you will see that this guy goes up and then goes down again. And it's like it's taking the lift, but it's staying on the first floor. So that happens because we define the levels incorrectly. So the first thing is that all these elements that belong to level to level one should have z equals to zero because the real measurement of the height of the level is defined on the level one here. So this will be 30 pixels, but this one is a little bit thick. z height equals to five. So we will need to define minus five here as an exception. So let's run it. You will see that everything looks exactly the same as it looked before, but now the agents and the transporters should be transported correctly through the lifts. And there you go. So be very careful when you define your levels. Another way of moving transporters from one level to the next is by using level gates. You can just drag them here uh, and I have this level gate in level one and I can go to level two and add another one. The only thing I need to do is to pair the gate with the other one. Only one gate needs to be paired. The other one, you don't need to do anything. As long as one is paired, everything is okay. Nevertheless, as of the time of this video, these level gates do not work in three dimensions. And that is weird because levels are three dimensions. And to see what that means, I will add a wall here in order to make it more difficult for the transporter to get to the destination. So let's run it. And you will see that in the two dimensional space, this guy moves around the wall, but in the three dimensional space, the, the transporter is still downstairs. So there's a problem there. Even though the behavior was correct, the way you visualize it in the three-dimensional space is not correct. So this might be fixed in later releases, but in general, gates are pretty simple. So as soon as they work, you won't have any problem using them. 